So here is the space I have to work with. And this is the base that I've already started working on. I've carved it and I've painted it black. This is gonna be for my castle. But I'm trying to work out the spacing right now to figure out how Hagrid's hut is gonna go. And I'm gonna build a little platform for that. And then I got some little Limax lights, which are quite cute. I still need to get a DC plug for that one. And then I just got Gringotts in the mail yesterday. That's my early birthday present from my hubby. Cause I've been wanting that one. And then this is Ilops Owl Emporium. So eventually I'll have a lot of Diagon Alley pieces. And then I also have the, the Hogwarts train that's gonna come out of here. So it's gonna be um, Diagon Alley on this side of things. And then I also have some other villages that I can put down there. And usually we put the tree here. I don't know how that's gonna work with this. I may need to push all this down a bit because um, the tree is quite, quite wide. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have a better idea of spacing soon. All right, so I've got some scrap foam and I'm piecing several pieces together because I'm going to want a base for this to sit on to be able to carve to that size and this width works well. So I'm going ahead and putting together several heights of this and then I'm just using Elmer's glue and then I'll be able to carve from this solidified block. I'm gonna put some weights on it and make sure it gets solidified, but that will go somewhere around here, adjacent to my castle mountain, which I'm still working on. And then this will go on top of it. Mm, probably don't need it that high, actually. Well, the castle will be way up here. So we'll see how that, how that goes. I'm probably gonna um, carve some steps or something into it, but what I would like to do is cover whatever base I end up doing with moss. So I have moss and um, I'm gonna do some trees and stuff behind Hagrid's hut. And that way it'll be like he's in the forest. All right, so I am ready to paint my second of about at least four coats. So I did all black on the bottom and that's so that I can get lots of these um, crevices and nooks and crannies and things to show up really um, with a lot of depth. And I want to go with a kind of brownish gray tone. That's what I'm going for because uh, I'm kind of modeling this after the one in Universal Studios. So I think that starting off with the brown tone, um, what I did was I added this brown, earth brown, and I'm just using normal acrylic paints here. So super friendly, very affordable. These bigger bottles are only two bucks. Uh, sometimes they're half off, but you can even get the little bottles for like 75 cents, no big deal. Uh, and with this brown, I added some black and a little touch of gray because I am gonna be layering some gray and some brown in this. And I'll, I'll flash a picture and, and hopefully we'll get it somewhat close to that. So I may end up needing to change my brush. This one's a pretty soft brush as you can probably see. I do have a stiffer brush here, which um, is just kind of a cheap craft brush, one inch. Um, we're definitely gonna need a stiffer brush when it comes to the top two layers because we don't want to completely cover things up. We're gonna want a dry brush. I have some paper towels here so that if I need to, I can dab the brush and go a little bit drier on it. But what we wanna do is we don't wanna completely cover up the black, but we wanna kind of lightly brush along the edges so that some of the black still shows up. Now, what you wanna remember is you cannot take away the brown. 
but you can add more. So it's better to add less and then let it dry and see what it looks like and then add a little more if you feel like you need it. But with all four of the layers, I think that you're gonna find that um, the colors, you know, none of them are gonna be in the exact same spot twice. So I'm just using a light touch here to see how I like this brown coverage to start with. And that's really starting to pick up on my crevices. Like this um, was, was my, my bottom layer and I just left it as kind of a, a ledge. And we don't wanna completely cover that up, you know, um, but we do wanna add brown to everything. So this brush is working just fine. I don't really need a stiff brush for this point of the process yet. When I start getting to the grays and I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do like little white tips on the steps and things like that as if it's been snowing. The castle itself, and I'll show you, it's the Harry Potter Department 56 Great Hall and Tower. And you can see the browns in that, um, but you can see there's no snow anywhere. So it's not a Hogwarts at winter. Um, but since this is a Christmas village, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have maybe a little bit of frost on the mountaintop. You know, you, you just do it however you want. Now, obviously, the Hogwarts train does not come underneath the Hogwarts castle. But I have the train, which is also Department 56. There it is. And I had the space. I have a very narrow, this is the width of my table. So this is what I'm working from. And I figure, okay, I have a very narrow space. So I'm gonna utilize all the space as best I can. And I'm gonna leave the inside of this black. And that way I think that the lights from the sort of half the train or quarter of the train I'm gonna leave in there will kind of glow a little bit. I, I kind of like that idea. Um, I don't need the whole train sticking out. Uh, I know it's there, it makes me happy. So at least it leaves me room for other things. So as you can see, I'm just very lightly putting it on here and letting it glide over and not fill up all the available spots. Now, one thing to notice um, or to mention when I was putting this together uh, before painting it, I used what I thought was foam safe spray glue. I think y'all probably know where I'm going with this. This is what I bought at Hobby Lobby. And it, uh, it says it's for foam. And uh, in the instructions, it says it's, it's safe for foam. It's not, it ate through where I, where I sprayed it, which was um, between the top and middle layer. So just forget about the fancy stuff and put either Mod Podge or just plain old Elmer's glue in the middle of all of these and then weigh them down with with something so that they'll completely adhere together and then you can start your carving and I'll, I'll show you pictures of how my carving was going and you can kind of see where some of the layers um were but i think with paint that's going to kind of cover that up um this is going to be the back so these were three pieces of foam that i actually purchased from amazon and i think they were like 11 by 17 inches um but I recently put together a set of shelves and that's where I got that foam from. So definitely keep an eye out with your friends and family for foam. Cause you can use all kinds of pieces to stick them together and make them bigger. Okay, so here is my second coat done with the darkest brown. I am gonna let it dry before I decide if I need to cover up any more of the black, but I don't think so. I mean, as you can see, there's like a, a little notch there, a little notch there that um, would naturally be a little bit darker because this is all about creating shadows. A little cave there is shadowed, but the piece that's exposed is gonna be lighter because the sun hits it. Um, so that's just kind of the idea there. One thing to note, that I did was carve out a notch. You might be able to see it better from the other side. 
there. Carve out a notch for the cord for my train. So I made sure that the cord to my train was plugged in and um, I could run a, a channel right through to the back for that to come because the train will be sticking partially out of here. Um, so that's something to definitely consider with these is do you need to put a hole in places so that you can put cords through um, without any bother. Now, the difficult thing about these Department 56 Harry Potter pieces is these ones, the smaller ones, have a hole for the light bulb. So um, this one, Gringotts Bank and Ilops Owl Emporium, they all have the light bulb fixture. Whereas the train has the old fashioned plug. It's not, it's not a DC plug. It's really, really skinny. And I'll show you that one. But then this one, I thought that it was the same plug as that one because it has um, a little outlet and it's not, it's wider and bigger. So now I have several Department 56 Harry Potter ones, and all of them come with different outlets, which to me is really frustrating because I was hoping to get, well, I bought a multi-port that fits that with three on it, but it doesn't fit anything else. So I'm not really sure what to do about that. Um, we'll see, but there's a look at the second coat for my castle display. All right, so here is my brown color, my second coat dry. It dried a little bit darker than I thought it would, honestly, but we still see a good bit of the black shading. Um, we definitely wanna lighten it up now with our next coat. So we always go from dark to light. And what I did was I took the same brown and I added just a tiny hint of yellow and some white to lighten it up because we want to try to go for some honey tones. Um, and I can see that there's like a little bit of green hinted in there as well. So we might even put little tiny touches of moss in areas um, to try to mimic that. Now, this castle is the one at Universal Studios. So that's what I'm trying to sort of emulate here. And uh, we'll go ahead and do our next layer of paint. So here you can see a bit more of that lighter honey brown. I am just getting the tip of my brush damp and I'm pushing off any extra on a drier area. I'm doing this with a stiffer brush because I want more control. I don't want it to sink into the crevices as, as much. So I'm going over it with a much lighter hand to start with. And you can decide how hard um, or soft you kind of want to do this. But as I said before, you can always add more, but you can't take it away once it's on there. So if you end up lightening an area kind of more than you intend or covering up the brown, the dark colors more than you want to, um, you'll have to go back in with some blobs of darker color to kind of fix those areas. So um, just start with a drier brush, dab, 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 and, and kind of feather it over in crisscross motions until you see the pattern that you're kind of interested in. Um, my stairs are looking quite good here, I think, with the coloring. Um, so it's just a matter of doing this to your taste level. And remember, you can do as many layers of this color or gray colors or brown colors, as many as you want. Um, so this is kind of the first layer of my finishing colors. So I'm definitely going to do at least one more other color on top of this, but the more colors you do, the more depth you're going to get. So I would say do at least four coats, four different shades of, of browns and grays, whatever you're kind of going with. 
And um, then on top of your, your final sort of coloration, you can also add little touches like um, white for snow along some of the steps, you know, where the snow would kind of accumulate. Or uh, I'm going to do some green because there's going to be sort of some lichen growing and some moss and things like that. Um, and I'll even stick on some pieces of moss in areas like this and this where moss would kind of accumulate. So you can keep layering as much as you want until you get the color you want. Um, I would definitely say let each coat dry completely in between each layer. And that way um, you'll get a really true color for the next stage. Okay, so that's my layer of lighter brown put on. And what I did was I squirted some gray into the remnants of the pan and then kind of mixed it in with the brown so that I can sort of swirl it on in little, little tiny areas, little touches um, to make a little bit of a, a gray effect. Um, I did on the top little swirls of it, so not all over and not in a back and forth motion because I'm trying to now get rid of brush marks a little bit. So just kind of swirl it in so that it looks like little, little blobs. Um, the more sort of little blobs you end up doing with more colors, the more it looks like natural rock. And um, as you can see, I've done kind of lighter areas where the sun would hit. So obviously the sun would hit on the ledges, but it wouldn't necessarily hit on the inside. So the inside I've left pretty dark um, in most of those layers. And you know, the sun wouldn't hit underneath ledges. So um, that kind of just gives it a little bit of interest, just a little little gray blobs here and there. Now the brush is pretty dry at this point, so I can easily get away with doing this because the brown layer was so light anyway, it, it dried pretty quickly. It's not even very tacky anymore at this point by the time I went around the entire piece. Um, the back is still a little bit damp. But as you can see, kind of what I'm doing here, little, boop, boop, little swirls, little dots, not everywhere. Because remember, we will come back with another lighter color and that one will probably have even more gray mixed into it. And then when I'm totally done, I'll use a little brush and just do little touches of green. I may even do a gray green kind of on top of this. Um, Yep. So just keep layering however you like it to your heart's content. One more gray right there. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so here I am doing my third coat and I made it lighter and grayer, more gray than the last coat. Yet again, the last coat dried darker than I expected, but we'll just keep layering with lighter and lighter colors until we're happy. And on the top here, I'm just doing little kind of swirls so that it's not showing my brush marks so much. The castle is pretty much covering almost every single square inch of this. There might even be just a little millimeter here and there. Um, I did not carve the base very big in comparison to my castle, which ordinarily a lot of people would do a wider platform. I'm learning from my mistakes. And you can put little figurines or lights or whatever you want to put on there. The castle is not going to have any of that on top with it. I do have some lights, though, that I'm probably going to put along the bottom or on the edge or something like that. Maybe I'll put a thumbtack in them and, and stick them like maybe one here or something like that. But, um, yeah, painting is continuing, dry brushing, little bits at a time, not too much. And then we'll see how this color dries, if it dries. I mean, we're looking at most of these colors have all dried darker than I anticipated. So we're just going to go ahead and assume that this is going to dry darker as well. And then we'll layer 
with some more gray and maybe a little green towards the end. Yep. Okay, so here is my last coat of light brown dry and it all kind of got a little bit too light for me and a little bit too monotonous. So what I'm doing now is, if you can see, I'm just speckling little tiny blobs of a bit of a, a darker brown with some hints of green in it. And I'm just blotting them on there randomly. I'm not, I'm not doing a full coat. So we're just dabbing, nice dry brush, not, not too thick with paint. And then we're, we're dabbing here, there, and everywhere in a random pattern. And that's gonna give me a little bit more of a differentiation in color, which is what I was wanting before I do my final coat of gray, brown, and then um, some green tips and things like that. But the front was looking a little bit drab, so we're just adding a little bit more tone in there. Um, Cause I don't want it to be too cold. I want it to be warm, um, like it is at Hogwarts in Universal. So you can just keep dabbing and dotting however you, uh, you like it best. I'm wearing gloves today because I'm being girly. I did my nails for Halloween and I don't want to mess them up before the big night. Okay, so here is my final coat of blotted brown and gray. I added a lot of gray to the last um, shade of brown and just dotted that around. So this is this is my last coat of of those colors. I'm quite happy with the way it's turned out, um, but I'm gonna go in with some green and a smaller, finer brush and put in little tiny pieces here and there, just along edges and, and things of uh, sort of moss growing on the rocks and things, and, and that'll match it with the castle a lot better. And then I'll show you the final, final version of that. Okay, so now I'm working with a small brush and several greens. I'm not mixing them together. I've got my brown and three shades of green. This one's more of an olivey color, so I'm kind of using this as the, the stronger green, but I'm just kind of dabbing a little bit of each thing so that my brush has a little tiny bit of, of each color on there. And then I'm very gently finding, well, I'm finding a little piece. Okay, here's a little outcrop. Now, the last coat is still a little damp here. That's totally fine because it'll help me blend in a little bit better. So I'm just taking the brush and I'm dotting it down where I, I think some moss might grow. And then I'm taking my finger and just dabbing very gently to spread it around a little bit and remove any excess. And I don't want to go too crazy with the green, but I do want those hints of moss to be sort of growing down my mountain because you know no one's touched this mountain in quite some time so we want to make it look rustic little tiny bits of green here and there a little dab at a time and slowly but surely i'm going to go ahead and grab another little bit of each now i'm putting in some brown too because i noticed that the green was just a little bit too green so the brown's kind of helping me tone it down a little bit. <laughs> Just on the ledges and where you think that moss would be kind of growing down a, an outcrop of stone. Um, yeah, need a little bit more on the back side here. This one looks like it would be growing some moss in that one too. And if you end up adding too much green, you can always go back in with some more brown. But I wouldn't overthink this part. 
you know, it's just for a little bit of interest. It's not, it's not to completely turn the whole thing green. I mean, unless you want to, because Hagrid's is going to be really green. But um, just don't forget to kind of do a little on the top. Now, my castle pretty much covers up the entire top. I did not make it wider than the castle or very much wider than the castle. So, um, you know, you live and you learn. That's, that's a mistake. That was kind of a mistake, but it doesn't hurt anything. Um, I just would have liked, if I was thinking about it ahead of time, since this was the first piece I ever carved, um, it would have been nice to have a little bit more for, for trees and stuff to stick in around the, the base of the castle, but it's it's not really that big of a deal. It's No one else is going to know, just me. So I'm just letting it come down this kind of outcrop of rock, following the line that I already made. And I'm sticking some in, in the damp crevices. There would probably be some in the crevices, right? This is missing a little bit of green. I'm gonna put some down here. It's definitely damp down there, right? So it's gotta have moss. Okay, let me look at the front again, because I really liked my front. And I want to try to mimic that on the other front, where my train is going to come out of. So I know there'd definitely be some around here. Maybe a little right there. Put some brown in there. There we go. That's a bit better. Maybe it's coming down the side of that. That looks like it would have moss on it, doesn't it? All right, almost done.